Hello, I'm Nigel Ward, Associate Minister at Holy Trinity Frogmore. Welcome to the third thought for the day on Paul's letter to the Colossians. In this passage, we see what guided him in his ministry and his heart concerns for the Colossian believers. Today's reading is Colossians chapter 1, beginning at verse 24 and going through to chapter 2, verse 5. Now I rejoice in what was suffered for you, and I fill up in my flesh what is still lacking in regard to Christ's afflictions, for the sake of his body, which is the church. I have become its servant by the commission God gave me to present to you the word of God in its fullness, the mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations, but is now disclosed to the saints. To them, God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. We proclaim him, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom, so that we may present everyone perfect in Christ. To this end I labour, struggling with all his energy, which so powerfully works in me. I want you to know how much I am struggling for you and for those at Laodicea and for all who have not met me personally. My purpose is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love, so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding, in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I tell you this so that no one may deceive you by fine-sounding arguments. For though I am absent from you in body, I am present with you in spirit, and delight to see how orderly you are and how firm your faith in Christ is. Having enthused about the greatness of the gospel of Jesus Christ, Paul now addresses a problem. It does not always look so great when Christians suffer for their faith. The gospel does not always look like what it really is, the most powerful and significant force in all human history. As he wrote this letter, Paul was in prison for proclaiming the gospel, hardly a model of power in the world's eyes. Yet such was Paul's concern for the church that he could describe his suffering as being on their behalf and as sharing in Christ's afflictions. He was not trying to suggest that his sufferings achieve the same end as Christ's sufferings, as though Christ's sufferings were not enough for our salvation. Christ has done it all to make peace between us and God, but the hostilities have not yet ended. Paul saw his sufferings as part of his passionate concern to see believers grow in spiritual maturity. To Paul, serving and suffering were part of God's glorious plan for his people. God's big plan, once hidden, was now out in the open. It is a glorious message of grace centred on Jesus Christ, not just for Paul's own nation of Israel, but for all who trust in him throughout the world. So Paul could rejoice and persist in building up the church by whatever means God made available to him. It was not without a struggle, but it was worth it. Having described what his ministry was about, Paul then went on to, in the beginning of chapter 2 to open his heart and share the concerns that undergirded his ministry. For him, heart and love were not primarily emotional words. They were more about thought and decision. His great desire for fellow believers was to see their minds focused on Christ and their wills committed to his service. United in truth and love, they would continue to be drawn closer to Christ. In their Christ-centered thinking, they would have an effective remedy against being deceived by people who could put across error with clever arguments. However, despite all these challenges, Paul could still take delight in those believers who were standing firm in their faith that always put Jesus first. A closing prayer. Lord God, we give you thanks for our brothers and sisters throughout the world who you were able to stand firm in their faith in Jesus Christ despite open hostility to that faith. Use their lives and words to bring many to the knowledge of the truth. And we pray that we too may live faithfully as we face today's challenges. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And here's a question to think about. In what way do these verses provide us with real encouragement when we find it hard to witness to Jesus Christ?